<clears throat> I will uh, give some brief information. It will be such uh, a little bit repeat of uh, former uh, talks, but I will briefly and summarize the main points. And the first of all, we will talk about failure after arthroscopic repair, risk factors, and then failure after bone block procedures. Failure after arthroscopic repair is a uh, very disappointing result, but uh, quite frequent. In, in some series, it's been re reported until 30%. But prevention is possible if you know the reason. The reasons can be grouped in two groups. First, patient-related factors, and second, surgeon-related factors. In the first group, we have to be aware of the age, hyperlaxed and type of sports may influence the failure. And the second group, we have to be very careful, especially I have highlighted bone loss, which will mainly the, uh, has the main role. ISIS, as uh, mentioned before, is uh, very uh, common in orthopedic uh, community. Uh, they have uh, Boalo et al. They have uh, summarized all these factors, age, sports part participation, hyperlaxity, and uh, bone loss in the direct x-ray if the if there is a uh, more than four points they have uh, advised letargy after after the uh, after three years of the first uh, pr presentation the first times they have uh, only made letargy after six points but we know that the age is a big problem uh, a big, big risk factor in especially uh, younger than 20 years it is 12 times and also in uh, younger than 30 years it is uh, nearly seven times riskier than the older ones uh, these guys don't know the danger and they think they are already ready for basketball even after one week after the surgery uh, also we have seen in our uh, patients uh, in, in the earlier periods uh, nearly uh, six per, six percent of radio stication and ten percent of uh, subluxation, and all the recurrence patients were younger than twenty one years. Another problem is uh, another risk factor is hyperlaxity. And generally, hyperlaxity is a contraindication for surgery, especially in Ehler Danlos and Marfan. Uh, Marfan patients. When you see such a uh, dislocation uh, in, in the in the X-ray, then you have to be uh, you have to uh, um, uh, you have to stop uh, doing surgery. These are not uh, good candidates for surgery. But there is also a concept of hyperlaxity in shoulder, according to Boileau. If the anterior uh, external uh, anterior external rotation is more than eighty five percent, then there is uh, anterior hyperlaxity. And if there is uh, more than 20% difference between hyperabduction between two sides, then that, that side is uh, hyperlax. And so the uh, other problem is also the contact and collision sports. Uh, mainly the younger patients, they play football, wrestling, other uh, contact sports like rugby in other countries. And arthroscopic surgery is rates of failure. Uh, and if they uh, go back to the sports, it's more, uh, more or less uh, uh, higher rates. And in some countries, uh, surgeons directly give bone block procedure to, the, to these patients. When we talk about bone loss, this, these are important. Then, then we talk about glenoid bone loss, humeral bone loss, bipolar bone loss, or, uh, and or glenoid tract concept. Uh, for example, uh, glenoid bone loss can be in fragment type, and this is related with low risk of recurrence, which is called bony banker. But if it is erosion type, then it is high risk for recurrence. So we have to be, we always uh, evaluate our patients with CT scan, uh, with an unfast three D CT scan, so, and so then we use the best fit circle. And the difference between the defect and the largest diameter gives us the percentage of defect. This is very important. And what is the threshold for recurrence risk? Traditionally, it's been known as 25% in, in the uh, earlier 20, 2000s. Later, biomechanical studies showed us that it is less than 20%. 
But in clinical studies in la later, in, in 2010, uh, 2017 and 20, it is nearly 15 to 13 uh, uh, percent. Uh, if there, are, there is a larger defect than 15 uh, percent, uh, there is a threshold, there is a risk of uh, recurrence. Uh, and on the other part, also there is a uh, problem in the humoral side, and it is also related with, uh, it is also called heel sacs, and it is also related with recurrent heel study with higher uh, percentages. But the location and length is important, especially length. If the heel sacs length is called uh, with a distance between rotator cuff insertion and the most medial part of the heel sacs, and uh, another uh, concept is intact anterior articular angle, which has been described later. And when uh, the heel sucks, largest part of the heel sucks, and there, there is an intact articular angle, if it is larger than one, 125, then, uh, then it, if it is less than 125, then it's engaging heel sucks in, in the study. Uh, and we, we can, th this uh, angle can be also used for recurrence rate. But the bipolar bone loss is the main problem, where uh, 75 persons have uh, uh, glenohumeral has this bipolar bone loss, and uh, most of them have uh, more than five. When they have more episodes, like uh, more than five, there is 82 percent of bipolar bone loss, and uh, in 2007. The glenoid tract concept of itoi has come into the orthopedic literature, and uh, it is a bit confusing in the first time, but I, I tried to summarize in one slide. Uh, he has uh, made, after very, uh, very comprehensive uh, calculations, that 83% of the whole glenoid diameter is in, co is in contact with the humeral bone. And uh, we know the heel sucks length from rotator cuff insertion to the most medial side of the uh, heel sucks. And if the heel sucks length is less than glenoid uh, di diameter, then it's an on track lesion. And if the heel sucks lesion is larger than the glenoid, then uh, uh, it is an off track lesion. So, off track lesions is it equal to risk for recurrence? Nearly, yes. When it's off track, then the rate of recurrence goes more than 30%, and the odds ratio is more than eight uh, off track versus on track. And the positive predictive value is more than 75%. Is it flawless? Is this concept? There, there are some problems like uh, defect size of humerus and glenoid is uh, used, capsular structures are not considered, or the heel sucks lesions. Uh, depth is not evaluated. When we compare from the first uh, slides, ISIS, newer studies from all around the world, from Korea, from both sides of the United States, they have uh, criticizing the ISIS uh, because the main problem is they have only looked in the X-rays. So another concept, which is called granite track, uh, track instead of the severity score. And there is uh, the first four parts is the same as the ISS, age, type of sport, level, uh, shoulder type of laxity. Only the bone loss is here on track or off track. And the off track lesion gives four points. And if it is four, more than four points, then they have made an, uh, the, their uh, patients lethargic. And after the evaluation of the same patient group, they have made less latage with similar recurrence rate like, like ISAs. So these might be uh, another, uh, a better evaluation for the uh, patients. And the risk factors have evaluated by the, uh, and from the entire world, the experts from the entire world, and, and it has been published last year. And they have agreed that age, hyperlaxity, collision sports, bone loss, and number of instability events are mo most important. And they have also, in another uh, paper of, of this series, with the same uh, authors, as you can see, they have uh, concluded that bank card repair 
is only uh, can be done uh, less than 15 uh, and some of them have uh, agreed that it is 20 percent of bone loss but is the lethargy procedure without problem uh, is there any risk of lethargy a large series of more than 300 pa patients uh, the Giacomo and Provencia, they have found that there is 4.7% uh, of recurrence and their risk factors were atraumatic history, bilateral instability, and female uh, gender. And in our series, we have added another risk factor, which is epileptic patients. In the non-epileptic group, we had 1.8% of uh, recurrence, but in epileptic group, it has rise up to 23%. And all the dislocations happened before the bone, uh, the, the, the graft has healed. So three months also operatively. So epilepsy control is very important in the, uh, in the instability uh, surgery patients. What can we summarize? We have to be aware of patients with factors like age, hyperlexity, and sport. That it is important when we talk about and consult with our patients, and especially about their uh, postoperative period. Bone loss evalu evaluation is mandatory for prediction of uh, recurrence. Scoring systems and algorithms are evolving. We, we have to uh, keep uh, reading the new literature and tailored treatment is more favorable and lethargy also may fail, especially uh, we have to be aware of a traumatic instability and epileptic patients. Thank you very much.